All right, I realize I'm wearing the same clothing, but it's because my last video that I recorded was supposed to be more of a topic dump, but then it turned into a ramble about one single topic. I think, I don't know if it's out yet, but either way, if it's not out yet, it's going to be about the drama surrounding the extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile, which is the Ted Bundy biopic that just debuted at Sundance, where I just was, so I got to see it for free. So I'm weighing in on the debate that people are having surrounding that film. So yeah, if you're into that, keep an eye out, or it's already up have a look at my channel. Maybe you missed some other videos I released while I was gone. But, so we are now going to be doing a topic dump of two different topics and it's both of terrible, terrible potential uh, and potentially actual kitty diddlers. We don't like kitty diddlers. Get the frick out of here, kitty diddlers. So the first story we're gonna be talking about is the Austin Jones situation, which originally blew up last year in uh, 2017 and there was kind of whispers about it back in 2015. So if you guys don't know, Austin Jones was a fairly large YouTuber who rose to fame through acapella covers. So if you haven't seen Pitch Perfect or if you haven't seen The Office with Andy, that's basically just covers where the only instruments are your voices. It's, it's literally just life changing. But anyways, that's how he rose to fame. And in 2015, there was a series of drama that kind of broke out because he'd been asking his fans, and this at this point was specifically, he tried to specify that it was just fans, not underage fans, just fans in general, but keep in mind a large percentage, if not most of his fans were underage. And he, in 2015, I believe was like 22, 23. I think right now he's like 25 or 26. Um, but he basically was just asking for videos of, you know, his fans like twerking and making little twerk videos. For something which in itself is bad enough like can you imagine somebody being like okay all my female fans let's get get some twerking videos you know uh you know 18 plus only but make twerking videos even if you were specifically asking the people of age to make twerking videos for you that's a little weird but um it, it got it got worse it eventually came out in 2017 after he got arrested and investigated by homeland security that it wasn't just asking for twerking videos, it was asking for twerking videos specifically from underage girls, and when he found out they were underage, that became the main point of contention and manipulation. And it actually escalated to the point that what he was charged with was two counts of the creation of child pornography, which is basically asking his underage fans to do things that constitute pornography. So the big thing that happened was that he started specifically asking his fans for, like I said, twerking videos, except it would escalate. He would want them to do twerking videos in their underwear. He would actually show them how to do the twerk videos as demonstrated here. Hey babe, um, so this is like the first basic twerk move. So this is what you do. You stand with your legs apart, you bend your legs, and then you arch your back and you unarch it and you do it faster so it's like popping it. So it's like... But in the specific transcripts illustrating his crimes, they, they have conversations between a victim A and a victim B. So I'm just going through victim B, he says, wait, you're 14? And victim B says, yeah, I'm a youngster. And then Jones says, do you realize how lucky you are? Seriously, I shouldn't even be talking to you. In which the victim replies, why? Jones says, because you're young. And victim B says, you're young too though. And Jones says, I'm 23. So this actually continued to him trying to ask her to prove how big of a fan she was. So he was manipulating his fans into doing things that they weren't comfortable doing by saying, well, you know, I guess you're just not my biggest fan because if you were my biggest fan, you'd totally be doing this. Which, you know, when you're young and you're talking to somebody that you look up to, you're naive, you're easily manipulated. It, it's a lot easier to get kids to do things like this and then they're just gonna be left feeling guilty and like they're the ones who did something wrong when they were actually just preyed on by a fuckwit. He would even go on to saying that he wanted to spank her and if, and if she was lucky, he would let her suck his dick. What a winner, what a winner here. She even said that she wanted to keep making him happy but didn't want to get in trouble doing it, but you know, he said, no, just keep making the videos and everything will be fine. Now where it got really obvious that it was their age, their very young age, that's what got him off, is that in the video specifically, they had to mention the fact that they were only 14 or only insert age here, which was always an underage. The other specifics of the video was that they had to be at least 30 seconds long of them twerking and they had to say that they were only 14 three times. That was specifically for victim B, but we saw that as well for victim A. Now, one of the specific transcripts, he actually asked the girl to make sure her underwear was like wedgied up into her butt and saying, oh, wouldn't that be so funny? When she mentioned that she would have a wedgie if she was kind of behaving like this, he said, well, you could just take them off, whatever's easier. Basically saying, you know, just 
don't wear any underwear while you're doing it. And when it looked like she was maybe having trouble doing the actual twerking action, he said, well, instead of clapping your cheeks, so doing, you know, the, the, the twerk movement, how about you just spread your cheeks for 10 seconds then? And then again, went on to say, your wedgie has to be good enough so that when you spread your cheeks, it shows the edges of your butthole. Oh my God, that would be so funny. Yeah. Hilarious. And that wasn't just like a one-off thing. He specifically asked, did your butthole show? Should you just not wear any bottoms at all? Your butthole would look so much better then. And then says, I'm just trying to help you. I know you're trying your hardest to prove you're my biggest fan and I don't wanna have to find someone else. So literally this dude is enticing underage fans to make child pornography for him and then manipulating their status as fans to get that subservience from them and it's it's absolutely disgusting. And this obviously went on a lot where he was just complaining that he couldn't see enough of her and that he was just trying to help her, you know? It's not it's not her helping him, it's just him trying to help her for sure. And one of one of my favorites is I bet you had no idea when you met me that just one day later you'd get to show me your butthole. How special do you feel? Question mark exclamation point. I am so glad this person has just recently pled guilty. Oh yeah, if I didn't mention that, because he got arrested, he's just recently pled guilty. Judges have allowed him to be free, he just can't go on the internet, which I think is disgusting, um, because who knows what he's, he's doing in his free time, but at least he's been caught, he's pled guilty, and uh, I guess he's kind of going to a bunch of different counseling type things, but you know, pardon me if I don't have any sympathy for the child predator. So while he hasn't been sentenced yet, I guess he faces a minimum of five years in prison, which is one thing with a maximum, I think of 20. So I think because he pled guilty, that actually went down. Cause I think originally it was 30. So even though he did plead guilty and that he's trying to do things to maybe like rectify the situation in some way, um, I do hope that he gets more than five years. I know that you shouldn't necessarily wish harsher sentences, but when you got people who are doing like massive term sentences just for having a little bit too much weed on them, but you've got somebody who's literally caused long-term emotional damage to a child and literally got children to create child pornography of themselves for him, and he might only get five years, like that's, that's, that's fucked up. All right, next topic, we've got another case, like I said, of um, Kitty Diddler who tried to take it one step further, and that was Thomas Chung, I believe it would be pronounced, and he was a high-res employee who was recently part of a sting entitled Operation Interception, which went down on Super Bowl Sunday, and it was conducted by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and he sits on a list with these people. So here's some other... Here's some other people. So obviously why I'm specifically mentioning him is that I, you know, I stream on Twitch a lot. I'm, I'm in the gaming community. So obviously this blew up a lot on my timeline. Uh, there's obviously a lot of people that I interact with that know him personally, people who have been at events with him. A lot of people corroborating that he was weird and, and kind of creepy. So he's a 32 year old man who was arrested as part of that sting when he actually tried to go meet up with somebody who he believed to be an underage girl who was actually an undercover police officer. So not only was he a high-rise employee, he also had a fairly large Twitter uh, following and was a partner on Twitch because that's typically what happens when you're staff members of these larger gaming organizations like high res they just kind of like default you into that partner program if you're high up enough. Um, so that, that is kind of why this gets uh, brought up a lot. If you guys don't know, high res would be most known for their involvement in Smite. So Chung specifically thought he was talking to an underage girl. There was no question about it. He thought he was talking to a 14 year old through the app Whisper. And then he specifically stated he wanted to meet up for sex. None of this like, oh, well, you know, we could meet up and go to the movies or we could meet up and go for coffee or something. Specifically, the meetup was for sexual intercourse. In the warrant, it specified that Chung stated in his messages that he wanted to show her some things, you know, when he was talking to this alleged underage girl who was actually an undercover cop, and that he didn't like using a condom. So this is all very sexually explicit conversations that just show his intent. Now, obviously, high res Studio fired him immediately. A lot of people are mad that they didn't do anything about it earlier, but I, like I said, while people are saying now that they always thought he was kind of un uncomfortable and creepy and they'd had un unsettling interactions with him. Uh, none of it had really come forward and obviously not to this extent, I suppose. So a lot of people are saying that, you know what, don't blame high res. There's no way they could have known. Had they known, they probably would have fired him. Obviously we'll never know if there was someone at high res studio that was made aware of his behavior and potential behavior towards other people in 
the community. Uh, if they did know, that that's pretty crappy that they didn't do their due diligence and do a further investigation. I don't think they knew things to this extent, but if this dude is willing to solicit sex on a Whisper app with an underage girl, I don't know how careful he's really being in life, but uh, again, can't really put any uh, of the blame on high res because we kind of have to go under the assumption that they didn't know because there's really not enough as evidence to show the contrary. If you have any kind of evidence to show to the contrary that they did definitely know and just chose not to act until this moment, feel free to leave it down below or inform me. But as of right now, I am un I am unaware of any of that. So one of their specific uh, statements was on Monday, February 4th, we learned through local news that Thomas Chung was arrested in an operation by the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. At this point, we know only what has been reported in the local news and by local law enforcement and cannot comment on specifics of Mr. Chung's case other than to say that as of today, Mr. Chung is no longer employed by High Res Studio. As a parent, it is difficult to imagine more disturbing allegations than those laid out in this news report. We commend the efforts of the Georgia Bureau of Investigations and other law enforcement to protect our state's children and send a strong message that the behavior targeted in their operation interception will not be tolerated in Georgia and hopefully also not tolerated in, you know, their company. Twitch also went on to completely suspend his account, which is good because YouTube has not, has still not suspended Austin Jones on YouTube because his content doesn't pertain to his crime. So again, using the Daddy5 example, the content on their website was literally what was used to charge them with child neglect and, you know, plead down from child abuse, basically, whereas Austin's content doesn't. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that because he used his platform on YouTube to solicit these underage girls, there's just not good content to necessarily leave up on the site. But again, I'm not YouTube. I have no dogs in this fight, but you know, good job on Twitch for deleting this dude's uh, Twitch account. And really just the main thing to be known here for anybody saying that, you know, this might've been like some kind of illegal operation or an over-exaggerated operation. Every single person that a warrant was issued for that was arrested had sexually explicit conversations with people that they 100% believed to be a minor and had the intent and actually attempted to meet up with them. So they were arrested when they tried to get to the meetup spot. So in Thomas's case, it was at a Kroger. So um, yeah, uh, the last thing I wanna mention is that there seems to, there's these movements of people who are trying to make it okay when, when you're sexually attracted and actually attempt to have sex with people that are under the age of 18, but maybe like over the age of 10, you're disgusting and you're sick if you're trying to justify wanting to have sex with a 14 year old when they are literally still a child. Stop. But yeah, that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Were there any other major stories in the past two weeks that you guys want my opinion on? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things I missed, but I don't wanna go too far back because it would just be very dated, but I can like toss in my opinions uh, in other videos as they go. Um, I, like I said, I don't think I said it in this video, but I think I'm getting sick. I thought I was just having an allergic reaction to kind of sleeping in a dusty room on my last night in Utah, but I think I'm actually getting like quite sick and I'm dealing with jet lag, but let me know. Um, let me know. Let me know if there's anything you want to hear my opinion on. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.